and the cause of death. The case, though, is being investigated as suspicious. A 4.8 magnitude earthquake shook the New York City metro area this morning. In Yonkers, New York, just north of Manhattan, Mayor Mike Spano told ABC News that he was in a meeting when the quake hit. People lit up our phones, uh, 911 calls, uh, calls to um, the mayor's helpline, uh, just hundreds upon hundreds. And, um, you know, listen, there's no damage. Uh, the schools are okay, the kids are okay, uh, the community's okay. The epicenter was near Lebanon in north-central New Jersey. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average up on the day right now, 313 points, the NASDAQ up 178. We'll have more on this uh, traffic situation out on Interstate 80 and Highway 201 with the strong winds. That's next. KSL News Time 101. Here's a way to get breaking news updates anywhere you go. At the store or in a work meeting, you can get breaking news on your phone. You can quickly read it, swipe, or click for more. It's super discreet, super fast. That's the app for KSL News Radio. Introducing Peach Doors and Windows. Are you ready to upgrade your home with stunning new doors but are overwhelmed with how to begin? Peach Doors is here to make the entire process smooth and stress-free. Visit their showroom to see their wide selection of wood doors, durable fiberglass, energy-efficient aluminum, oversized glass bifold doors, and so much more. It's not just about looks, it's about durability and security to protect what matters most. Let them help you find the perfect match for your home, budget, and personal style. Visit their showroom and see for yourself. No pushy sales tactics, only guidance from their experienced staff. No inflated markups just to offer so-called discounts. See their five-star reviews where customers rate them on their attention to detail through every step of the sale and installation process. Amazing home transformations begin with windows and doors. Serving Logan to St. George, just Google Peach Building to see for yourself. Attention, Dave's Bernina in Provo and St. George just finished a three-day event in Vernal and is now offering these just out of the box, brand new Bernina machines at tremendous discounts with full warranties. Save thousands on the Bernina sewing, quilting, and embroidery 735, 790, and 770 CAFE machines featuring unmatched quality and ease of use. Many of these machines have special offers and come with free gifts with purchase. We also have a few L890 sergers and a sit-down Q16 quilting machine. Hurry in, quantities are limited. All other exciting Bernina machines in our stores are on sale too. Plus we'll have discounts on Bernina accessories and zero interest financing options. Come to Dave's Bernina now at 691 East St. George Boulevard and 2017 North 550 West in Provo while supplies last. Davesbernina.com. Advertising used to be simple. Your options were radio, TV, newspaper, and let's not forget the yellow pages. Now it seems like a tidal wave of options. Podcast, cable TV, streaming, OTT, CTV, audio network, smart speakers. On top of that, you need digital marketing for your website along with SEM, SEO, display, video, YouTube, email, and all the social media platforms. Look, you're the expert in your business. Wouldn't it be nice to have an expert to market you? We are Bonneville Salt Lake, the local marketing and media company you know and trust. We reach customers across all digital and social platforms and have the reach of traditional advertising available as well. We find your customer anytime, any place, anywhere on any device here in Utah or anywhere in the world. We work to optimize your results with our in-house local team of experts, providing you with qualified leads, not just impressions. Contact Stephanie Palmer at KSL for a free consultation including a complete digital audit with no obligation or cost to you email s palmer at ksl.com that's s palmer at ksl.com emergency traffic now brought to you by sinclair's dino pay app save up to 20 cents per gallon here's ricky meese due to strong winds in uh up to 70 miles plus per hour uh, we do have restrictions in place for both for uh westbound and eastbound i-80 on the West Desert. Now, this is for all high profile vehicles, semis and trailers, RVs. You are prohibited from travel east or westbound I 80 between Lake Point 
in Tooele County all the way to Wendover at the Nevada state line. We already have one accident where a semi has toppled over westbound on the 21st South Freeway at the I-80 junction. It is partially blocking a right lane and causing delays. SNS Roofing is your trusted source for quality and affordability. They've been the top roofing company in Utah for over 40 years. Schedule an estimate now. Get a free quote at snsroofinginc.com. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. And with this cold front moving through this afternoon, we're expecting rain and snow showers tomorrow with as much as a foot of additional snow in the mountains should all be done by Sunday. And right now, 61 degrees, windy, I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside, Inside Sources. America's voice of reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Well, we're going to get you to think again in a little bit different way today. Every Friday on this show, we take an inside look at the presidential politics. But today we're going to do it to start the show. So a little variation on the theme and many things happening in the headlines relating to the current president, the former president and people who would like to be president. So let's begin. Think you know the news of the day? Think again with Boyd Matheson on KSL News Radio. So we are going to take a little bit of a step back, and it is going to be time for us to take an Inside Sources look at presidential politics. Inside Sources, an inside look at 2024 presidential politics. Well, we decided on a Friday with a lot of interesting twists and turns as it relates to the presidential race. Uh, There's lots that we could break down. There's a lot of numbers. There's a lot of headlines in terms of who's winning and who's losing in key demographics and key battleground states. Uh, but I want to go beyond just all of that. We also have the the big news, I guess, of the last 24 hours, and that is that the group No Labels uh, is not going to field a candidate or a ticket uh, for president in the 2024 election cycle. So we're going to dig into that. But that's not the important thing. It's what is underneath that I want you to think again about. And it is how all of us as voters, how we as a society are approaching our politics in general. And so let's start with the announcement uh, that came out yesterday that uh, no labels would not be uh, putting a ticket together. Joe Cunningham, who's the national director of no labels, uh, broke that news uh, with Neil Cavuto on Fox News and explained why they came to that decision. Take a listen. We've been very straightforward uh, and upfront and honest with the American public that we were going to field this ticket if two conditions are met. Number one, if Americans wanted another option which is definitely a box that is checked. And number two, if we're able to find candidates that we believe have a pathway to victory. And that's where we ran into a bit of trouble is at the end of the day, we weren't able to find candidates that we felt had a uh, straightforward path to victory in this. Uh, So that was the announcement yesterday uh, that they would not field a ticket. And I think there were a lot of folks that were disappointed Pointed. Uh, again, the vast majority of the country is not super excited about a Biden-Trump 2.0 battle, but that is what we're getting and that we're going to have between now and the first Tuesday of November. We have a couple of independent candidates that are out there. We'll talk about those later. Uh, but the interesting thing to me as you go through that is just looking at this process uh, and all of the furor and the millions and millions and millions of dollars that were spent by both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, not to support their candidates, but to try to undermine and block no labels from fielding candidates. Uh, It was extensive, it was deep, uh, and it shows how worried both the Democrats and Republicans are about people actually having a third choice. Now, of course, uh, we noted last week uh, with a, a lot of sorrow on this show, the passing of our good friend, Senator Joe Lieberman, who was one of the founding voices, uh, was the founding co-chair, again, with the former Utah governor, John Husband Jr., of the No Labels effort. And uh, when we had him on the show, Senator Lieberman, on the show back in November, uh, he actually talked about the origin story, the original vision of No Labels. I think it's worth remembering. So uh, for those who are listening who don't know about No Labels, it was founded 
in 2010, to make a long story short, to combat the partisan gridlock in Washington that was stopping our government from solving our nation's problems and, and taking advantage of some of the opportunities that our country has. And, well, it mostly focused on Congress and trying to elect uh, Republican Democrats who would uh, work across party lines to get something done. Uh, that was Joe Lieberman uh, back in November uh, when we talked to him about the origin story of No Labels. And I thought it was interesting that the r- original focus uh, was really on government and good governance, uh, which we have to get back to. Because if we want to restore and re-enthrone trust in the institutions of government, we're not going to do that through our politics. We will not do that through our politics. The only way you restore confidence in government is through good government. Uh, And so I think that is an important part of that. Uh, We also asked Senator Lieberman at that time uh, about the organization and the decisions about whether they would run a candidate or put forward a presidential ticket for 2024. Here's how he described it then. The hard part will be deciding whether actually to run a ticket and whether we don't want to be spoilers. We, We want to do it if we think we have a chance to win and make a constructive statement about how both major parties have to work together or they're going to be replaced. And so that was really the, the vision, and they, they kept to their word. They said, look, we, don't, we can't fill the ticket that we think is competitive or that it has a path, a plausible path to victory uh, in the White House, and so they stood down. Now, it does not mean the organization is going away in any way, shape, or form. They're going to continue to focus on good governance. There are, I think they will also continue to focus on a lot of the down-ballot races, which is usually where good governance begins Uh, is more at the local level, the state level. And I think they'll continue to play in that space, which I think is important. Now, one of the things that we have to get to in all of this, you can say, well, okay, here we are once again uh, with the the choice uh, between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, current and former presidents. And no one's super thrilled about that. And the question then becomes for all of us is when will we, the people, decide that we are not afraid that we're not afraid to lose power. Because right now, you're going to hear a lot of people line up and say, uh, it is choice A or choice B, it's binary choice, it's good versus evil. They'll go through all of the things that we uh, really don't like on this program uh, because it never leads to good governance. Uh, In fact, I want to go, actually, you know, I'm going to save that to the end. We'll we'll come back. Uh, Hillary Clinton made some comments that were really just indicative, I think, of uh, where the elite in both parties are. And that is part of the problem. Yesterday, we discussed on this program, we're going to come back to this conversation with uh, with Sam Abrams, uh, talking about the disconnect, especially with young voters, uh, and the fact that the elites are either talking down or lecturing or wagging a finger at, uh, not a great way to engage people uh, in a cause. And to me, that's the real challenge in all of this, is if we really end up with just this monopoly, and our current political system is a monopoly, it just happens to have two heads, it has a blue head and a red head, and no offense to redheads. Uh, it just has the Democrats and the Republicans that are controlling everything. And, and to me, that's the, the real challenge of all of this is how do we get past that and how do we get people to uh, be looking at and looking for a different path? But if we're all basing everything out of fear and fear of the, quote, others, or the awful, evil, horrible, deplorables, uh, then we keep getting what we have right now. And for those in power, that's exactly what they want, status quo. Uh, We're going to break this down at the end of the show today and talk about how do we get out of the either or and how do we actually get to something better. We'll be right back. Think again on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. Held over due to popular demand today through Sunday. Save thousands on hot tubs and swim spas. It's a major manufacturer's liquidation of hundreds of in-stock spas. Utah State Fair Park. Hot tubs discounted 40 to 80% to the lowest possible price starting at $29.99. Free professional delivery. Take possession tomorrow, next week, next month, or next season. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Utah State Fair Park. Shop over a dozen models of swim spas. 
spas. From 11 feet to over 19 feet, swim spas offer low-impact exercise, active family fun, unsurpassed relaxation, and installation in one day. The Hot Tub and Swim Spa Sale. Everything must go. Free parking, free admission. You can't afford to miss this. It's a major manufacturer's liquidation of hundreds of in-stock spas. Today, noon to 8. Saturday, 10 to 8. Sunday, 10 to 6. The Hot Tub and Swim Spa Sale. Utah State Fair Park. Visit HotTubAndSwimSpaSale.com. Twice a year, KSL looks forward with you to General Conference. Coverage starts Saturday at 9.30. It's the 194th Annual General Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Hear sessions all weekend on your radio at 102.7 FM and on your phone on the app for KSL News Radio. Devotion to country, service to Utah. Brent Oren Hatch had a front row seat watching his father serve our state faithfully in the Senate. A constitutional conservative and lifelong Republican, Brent Oren Hatch is a champion for the rule of law. He's running for Senate to stop this lawless president from destroying our country from within. Hatch will fight to secure the border once and for all and take on Mexican drug cartels to halt the flow of deadly fentanyl. Brent Oren Hatch knows the national debt is just as big a threat to national security. Hatch won't rest until the budget's balanced and won't cave to the big spenders in both parties. Pro-life, deeply committed to religious liberty, rock-solid Utah conservative. Brent Oren Hatch for Senate. Paid for by Conservative Outsider PAC, which is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. www.copac.us Hello, Spring. This is your friend, Adventure. You've been on my mind, and I'm wondering where you've been. Weather's warming and a word on the street is? You're looking for riders to enjoy Cedar City Brinehead Spectacular Trails? Lime well, told Three Peaks Recreation and Parawam's Evil Water Trail System are the bomb. Or perhaps you've changed. Maybe you're more into hiking? Colob Canyon or Thor's Hammer Trail make a perfect meetup place. Oh, oh, and don't forget Cedar City's spectacular views accompanied by disc golf at the Thunderbird Garden Course. Listen, I've always been here. I still like the same things. Spring skiing, tubing, but I'm more mature now. Uh, my interests have expanded. There's Cedar City's Southern Utah Museum of Art, strolls downtown, fine dining or shopping. I'm more interesting than you know. Let's connect and rekindle our relationship starting in the spot we always enjoy. Cedar City Brian Head. Look me up at visitcedarcity.com. Your old friend, Adventure. Common Spirit Health, hospitals, clinics, and caregivers all connected to advance health care in Colorado, Kansas, and Utah. Health care with human kindness is here. Hello, human kindness. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bomas. First, strong winds in Utah's West Desert have closed Interstate 80 to high-profile vehicles all the way from Lake Point into Willa County to Wendover this afternoon. Second, police have identified the human remains found on the shore of the Great Salt Lake near Willard Bay. Third, Yonkers, New York, one of the communities shaken up by this morning's earthquake. 61 degrees right now, and back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Boyd Matheson divides rage from reason on Inside Sources. Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. It's great to be with you today, as always. And as we roll into the general conference weekend for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, of course, KSL News Radio has you covered from beginning to end. You can listen to all the sessions of conference here on KSL News Radio. And then we've got special programming that will air in between all of those conference sessions. And uh, you don't want to miss any of those on Saturday or on Sunday. And one of those in particular happens to be mine, a special that we have been working on that uh, we're really excited to share with all of you. And uh, this will actually air on Sunday at noon after the morning session of the General Conference. And the focus is on the Apostles, Ordinary Men, Extraordinary Ministry. And let me give you a little bit of the backstory. Uh, this is like interviewing myself today. Uh, the backstory is that if Regardless of your religious persuasion, belief, non-belief, or affiliation, that the influence of a group of ordinary men from in and around Galilee living in the meridian of time is, is undeniable. Uh, their witnesses, their efforts, their missionary uh, work 
has uh, reverberated around the world for 2,000 years plus. And they were unremarkable. Uh, even, even at the time, uh, they were ordinary fishermen, a tax collector, a political zealot, uh, nothing extraordinary about any. Uh, and yet the work that they did in taking the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world and beginning that movement uh, has, uh, again, changed the course of history for well over 2,000 years. And so one of the things we're going to do in the special Sunday at noon uh, is get into a little bit of the history of the apostles, what that role is, what it has meant. And then, of course, uh, when you look at it in the context of the General Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ, it will include those that they sustain and support as modern-day apostles and what that role is and what that looks like. And they're also ordinary men. Uh, There's an interesting collection of doctors, lawyers, teachers or educators, a pilot, communication specialists, uh, very diverse backgrounds. And again, nothing too great, nothing too grand. And yet the ministry that they're engaged in is global uh, and extraordinary and impacting people all around the world. And so as we look at how we play all of that out, uh, I had a, a rare opportunity to sit down uh, with President Jeffrey R. Holland, who's the acting president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles in the Church of Jesus Christ, and to talk a little bit about his time as an apostle. Coming up in June of this year, he will have served as an apostle uh, for 30 years. And so I actually asked uh, Elder Holland, sitting in his office, to describe some of his feelings, uh, which seemed to be common amongst those called to the apostleship uh, when he first began. I think when I was called... Uh, and the wrestle that I had, I just, I struggled. Uh, for the first two years, I apologized to everybody that I had this calling. I'd, I'd call people in off the street. I, I'd talk to the newspaper boy. I'd, I'd apologize uh, to everyone. I finally was told to stop apologizing and get to work. Uh, so I really wrestled with inadequacy uh, when I began, and I and I had the impression then that I'd match that feeling with the feeling of so many uh, out uh, in in life and uh, their struggles with in my case feeling inadequate but but their loneliness or their uh, difficulty the uh, the um, sadness that might come the tragedy to a family i've spoken on mental uh, illness i just thought well maybe my mission is to to talk about hope, to extend a hand to uh, those who don't think there's any hand mm. to be extended. I wasn't going to be uh, Bruce R. McConkie or James E. Talmadge. Uh, there were a lot of things I, I couldn't do, but maybe I could lift up the hands that hang down and strengthen people's knees. Or So I've tried to do that. Now that has certainly been part of President Jeffrey R. Holland's ministry is that uh, gospel of hope and redemption, uh, that there is a, a way forward and uh, that often we just have to keep uh, moving forward and moving along regardless of the challenges or the difficulties uh, that we faced. Uh, as I continue my conversation with President Holland, uh, I gave him a chance to talk about, he's had a he's in a very unique position right now in that he has seen many apostles go before him. Uh, and now he is one of the senior apostles and of course the acting president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. And so I had him give some perspective about those who went before and those that he currently serves with now and what he has learned and gained from his fellow apostles. Boy, it it has been my privilege, a privilege I never could have imagined, never could have guessed, a little kid running around in Washington County. It's been my privilege to sit at the feet of and 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 shoulder to shoulder with the finest men on the face of the planet. Uh, Their kindness, their example, their uh, patience, uh, their humor, uh, their uh, bold, uh, solid backbone and square shoulders, all of that, I man after man and season after season i've been able to to enjoy and to and to feel and to be moved by uh they have been so good to me and uh i still feel it i get a little emotional here 
just just saying that much to you about what these what uh, what these men have meant to me for 35 years nearly so i i miss them and admire them and praise them and now i uh, i have the same privilege uh with a much younger group coming along and uh, I love and admire them in the same way, who have the same qualities and affect me the same way. And finally, in my conversation with uh, Jeffrey R. Holland, acting president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, uh, I asked him about the essence of the essence, the, the nature, the purpose, the central role of his apostolic mission. Well, the ultimate role, the essential role, the focused and featured role of an apostle is to declare that Jesus is the Christ. We are called to be special witnesses of his name in all the world. So we are going to all the world with that singular message that Jesus is the Christ, that this church is his church, that we are doing God's work, we are children of the living God, and uh, it is his work and his glory uh, and his power that allows us to do what we're doing now and will allow us to do what we do in the future, including saving the world. That's no small task, Boyd, uh, but that's what uh, 15 men are ordained to do. I, I single out the apostolic uh, figures, three members of the First Presidency and 12 apostles. And uh, we are to do what those ancient apostles did. It must have been a sobering task. It must have been uh, more than sobering. It, it's got to have been almost a debilitating mm -hmm. message that they heard from the Savior himself, that they were to go to all the world uh, teaching and baptizing in his name and uh, that's what we've done that's what they did and then that's what we've been doing since 1830 a uh, great perspective there from elder jeffrey r holland uh, acting president of the quorum of the 12 apostles in the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints and i loved how he connected the dots to all of those apostolic eras uh, going back to the beginning and how crushing that must have been for those original apostles uh, to have a charge to take that message to all the world. One of the things that uh, got me focused on this as a topic for this special, again, you can hear the complete special uh, coming up at noon on Sunday in between sessions of General Conference right here on KSL News Radio. Uh, but one of the real driving forces for me was going back and looking at some of the things that motivated William Tyndale uh, to translate Scripture into common language. And one of the animating driving forces for Tyndale uh, all those years ago, was a survey of 16th century English clergy that revealed most of them didn't know who the apostles were. Few of them could name more than four. And he felt that uh, they needed to uh, take those apostles out of obscurity, that otherworldly obscurity. Uh, and I think that's an interesting way to frame that. And it doesn't mean that apostles are to be brought to popularity or to celebrity, uh, but it does mean that they have a, miss a mission and a message. And so these ordinary men uh, with an extraordinary ministry uh, go about doing that in very quiet ways. And so part of what we will do on the special coming up on Sunday is we'll actually look at each of the current members uh, of the 12 apostles and the uh, first presidency of the church. I'll give you a little insight from my observations, having covered and followed them uh, and having observed them over the years to give you a little indication of what I think their ministry uh, is reflective of. And then we'll hear a little bit from each of them uh, in terms of some of their messages to the members of the church and to the world. So all that coming up, uh, KSL News Radio is the place for your general conference. Uh, just dial it in for all sessions of conference and some special programming, including the Apostles, Ordinary Men, Extraordinary Ministry at noon on Sunday. We'll be right back. It's 1.30 at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bonas. KSL's top story this hour. We have breaking news right now with a windstorm 
that has closed Interstate 80 from Wendover to Lake Point this afternoon because of strong winds. We have more now from KSL News Radio's Ricky Meese. Well, the freeway is only closed to high profile vehicles. All other traffic can get through, but the wind has taken a toll. We've had a rolled semi westbound I 80 at SR 201. It's to the right, but our own KSL Channel 5 photographer, Derek Peterson, has sent in phot- uh, photos of the storm rolling in. And you can see these dark clouds, and the winds have kicked up to 70 plus miles per hour. This is not a place you want to be traveling on I-80 between Lake Point and Wendover if you're in an RV or pulling a trailer or in a trailer or in a tractor trailer semi because you're going to get bumped around. Again, restrictions in place for both east and westbound I-80 through Tooele County on I-80 in both directions. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. Now, Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, asking a federal court to toss out the Federal Trade Commission's antitrust case. And here's ABC's Alex Stone. In court filings, Meta argues the Federal Trade Commission has failed to show that Meta acquiring Instagram and WhatsApp harmed competition and that the FTC approved those acquisitions over a decade ago. Meta arguing it does have competition in the form of TikTok, X, Snapchat, and YouTube and that revisiting done deals to acquire Instagram and WhatsApp essentially means no sale is ever final. Alex Stone, EBC News. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average up on the day 325 points, the NASDAQ up 189. And our KSL weather, those strong winds are uh, affecting traffic in the West Desert. That's next. KSL News Time, 131. News doesn't just mean information or dates. It's the story of our local history being told in real time. Be a part of the story. This is Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon. We hope to be a part of your story. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. When the weather warms up, it's like a stampede, except instead of dust stirred up by hundreds of hooves, it's a cascade of phone calls to advanced window products. This is Jeff Kaplan. Soon as the sun shines and the snow's gone, people want new windows and frames from Utah's number one custom window maker, and the wait for installation grows longer. But right now, you can get near the front of the line by calling for a quote and get $2,500 off when you purchase 10 windows or more. That's on top of the incredible savings for the highest quality double-pane windows and frames, any style, any color. See, at Advanced Window Products, they actually build the windows here in Utah. They install the windows, and they guarantee them for life. There's no middleman, and they can pass the savings on to you. They even offer buy now, pay later. So get in before the wait grows longer and get the $2,500 off. Get your new windows this spring. Make the call. Advanced Window Products, 801-850-9100. That's 801-850-9100 or visit advancedwindowsusa.com. The Angie's List you know and trust is now Angie, and we're so much more than just a list. We still connect you with top local pros and show you ratings and reviews, but now we also let you compare upfront prices on hundreds of projects and book a service instantly. We can even handle the rest of your project from start to finish. So remember, Angie's List is now Angie, and we're here to get your job done right. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus 100 bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Well, hello, it's me again. And like me, I'll bet you're ready for spring in a little green lawn again. I've got a tip. Don't spend a fortune hiring a lawn care company. Save some money and do it yourself. And here's how. Go to j j Garden Center in Layton and purchase their simple, color-coded five-step fertilizer system that covers up to 10,000 square feet and will rejuvenate your lawn for just $199.98. And nobody beats j j's price. So for a lush, healthy, green lawn, 
Come and try J&J Garden Center's five-step fertilizer system. I promise you won't regret it. Take the Leighton Parkway exit, Main Street to Gentile, then with two miles, you've got to see it to believe it. You really do. Country grown to your home, J&J Garden Center. Traffic and weather together now brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here again is Ricky Meese. A KSL traffic trooper is saying it's snowing down south, Beaver and Tisipio, uh, and weather also a factor here in northern Utah, where high winds have toppled at least one, maybe two semis, and that's why travel is responsible is restricted to high-profile vehicles both directions of I-80 between Lake Point and the Nevada state line. The best-kept secret is this is the pass. It's a pass for fun for everyone. Now through April 30th, save $20 off every annual pass level. 362 days of fun. Visit thisisthepass.com. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. And with this front moving through, we're expecting a rain and snow showers tomorrow with as much as a foot of additional snow in the mountains. Should all be done by Sunday, but with the clouds sticking around. Right now, 60 degrees and uh, cloudy and windy. I'm Dan Bombas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside Sources. America's Voice of Reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. We always say on this show that we only talk about politics so that we can explore society, and we explore society so we can get to principles and the people who actually live them. And in one of those elements uh, is this whole area of entrepreneurship. And to me, I think it's the most undervalued thing we have going for us in this country. Uh, we often talk about the founders of this nation as being these, you know, noble statesmen, great minds. Uh, at their core, they were really just a bunch of entrepreneurs uh, who were tired of being overtaxed and overregulated. Uh, and they wanted to run their businesses and pursue their own entrepreneurial version of the American dream. Uh, and that led to so many things that mattered in terms of principles. And uh, so when I saw th- uh, something pop up this week about Utah Valley University's Entrepreneurship Institute, um, like that's a conversation we have to get to. And it's an exciting one, uh, as many of the things that are going down on down at Utah Valley University. And uh, this is that the uh, Entrepreneurship Institute uh, has a new director. Seth Jensen uh, has joined and uh, we've got Seth on the line. And uh, Dr. Jensen, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, so I, I want to get into, uh, one, the uh, the Institute itself, and uh, we know there's a lot of amazing projects going down there. But for our listeners, uh, give us a little backstory in terms of your journey uh, that ultimately led you here to Utah Valley University and the Entrepreneurship Institute. Yeah, so I'm a Texas boy that ended up at BYU for a finance degree, and I love Utah Valley. I love the mountains. I love what we do here. Um, but I went across the pond and went to the UK University of Oxford for my grad school. And I did a master's there with a PhD in uh, business strategy. And near the end of that kind of PhD work, I did some consulting for the University of Oxford on building innovation ecosystems and building entrepreneurship programs within universities. So kind of got to do a cool sweep of all the kind of top entrepreneurial programs in the world, um, the MITs, the Stanfords, the Berkeleys. And then just near the end of that project, UVU reached out with this opportunity and it was just kind of a perfect opportunity to put into practice all the things that that I've been working on. So uh, I love that's that. kind of a, a sweep. Yeah, I love that, and and I love that in the context of that research, uh, you hit all the things that we think are are absolutely vital, uh, and that is community building, innovation, strategy. Uh, that all of those pieces are are so crucial. So as you did that, and again, that's such a unique position to to be able to take a look uh, across all those institutions. Again, doing it based out of the uh, University of Oxford. Uh, give us a sense of uh, what are the core things that we should all be thinking about? Because we, we kind of throw around the term entrepreneurship a lot. Uh, I think it's a little overused that way, but I think that there's a core to it that's a little more important. Give us your view of what's the essence of entrepreneurship. Now, I love that question, and I think you're absolutely right. We think of entrepreneurs a lot of the time as just really great salespeople, and I'm sure that's part of the equation. But I think what's often missed is that an entrepreneur is an expert. If you want to know a certain industry or a certain problem or various solutions really, really well, 
you should talk to, talk to an entrepreneur in that space because they've had to kind of go from the ground up and figure out every nook and cranny of that problem and what where value lies in kind of the landscape of that particular uh, area or industry. So I really like to think about entrepreneurs as experts. They're the most fluent people we have in terms of kind of these big societal issues. Yeah, uh, and we need so much more of that uh, locally in our communities. We need it at the state level. We clearly need it back in Washington, D.C. at the federal level. I'd, I'd love to deploy uh, maybe a, a, a cadre of your students to uh, to head back there and, and take it on from an entrepreneurial perspective. I think it would be game-changing uh, in a lot Definitely. of ways. Uh, one of the things that you have down there at uh, Utah Valley University is this build a business program. Again, part of that, uh, I think part of your forte in terms of that experiential learning. Uh, describe for our listeners what that build a business program is. Yeah, so there's a lot of great universities if you want to go kind of learn about entrepreneurship as kind of an academic inter- exercise. But I don't think there's any better educational experience than actually building a business and kind of going through the process of creating value, getting it in the hands of customers, and then participating in markets. So we've kind of revamped everything we do at UVU so that we get students. I think of my job is creating as many ramps towards running a real business as possible for our mm-hmm. students. And these build a business courses are exactly that. We're over one or two semesters. They come in, we surround them by industry mentors, and we take them through the process of building a business such that they have paying customers by, again, the end of one or two semesters, depending on their kind of industry. And we love it. We love this model. We love just getting our hands dirty and putting them where, where the action is kind of for their industry. Yeah, no question about it. And there's nothing better than that hands-on real world with the right kind of mentors around you uh, to really see what that is. And I love the term on-ramp. Uh, and that's what we should be doing everywhere is creating more and more on-ramps uh, for possibilities right. for people. I think it is such a crucial part of that. Uh, I wanted to get your take on what – on one thing, this is something that I think has been uh, kind of on the politics side of things is is foreign policy. We often throw money at problems and we prop up little democracies and little freedom things here and there. And then, of course, they ultimately slide back in into socialism or communism or whatever it may be as the power is concentrated. Uh, but to me, the thing that has to happen for freedom to be sustained is entrepreneurs have to be able to thrive. And so you have to actually have right. the structure that supports entrepreneurs because once that happens, uh, freedom has got its best best shot. How do you see that? And from your very global perspective and experience, how do you see that playing out around the world? Yeah, it's a great question. And it's, it's tricky, right? Because markets exist to provide value to people. It's to help people solve problems and distribute kind of the solutions. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's, it's messy. I mean, entrepreneurs, <laughs> for example, they sit, they have one foot in the social world. They have one foot yeah. in the markets. You know, who who surrounds them, what culture they're a part of, what the government says they can and can't do as they start a business, all of this matters. And so it's not no, you know, market is perfect. No, no government policy has all the all the right things in place. Um, but I do think you're absolutely right that that we should let markets do really, really good things. Um, but we also have to kind of acknowledge the messiness that entrepreneurs have kind of yeah. through that process. Yeah, no question. And, and the governments just need to make sure that the systems are in place or the structures are in place so that they, they at least have a chance <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. To, to take those risks uh, and the consequences of those risks. That is, that's the market portion, right? The mess, And often the very messy portion of that. Right, definitely. Uh, so as uh, you look at the the path forward, uh, give us a little vision in terms of uh, what's on the horizon uh, for Utah Valley University's Entrepreneurship Institute. Well, we're, we're excited. We've got a lot of things in the works. Um, so these build a business courses, we're, we're launching them in the fall in kind of this revamped way. And we're expecting to generate literally hundreds of new businesses coming from our students. Our students are hungry for them. Yesterday, I heard about a student who literally started crying because they didn't realize this was available to them. It was just what they were looking for in their educational experience. It was really meaningful for us to know that we're kind of, again, providing a really important product for our students. But we're kind of playing with this model in different areas. So we're also piloting a program where we get our top students. We bring in serial entrepreneurs. These are people that have been successful many times throughout their career in launching businesses. And we're pairing them in almost an apprenticeship format to launch something new. Um, and again, it's kind of cool because it solves, you know, Yeah. no offense, but college kids are kind of snot nosed kids, right? <laughs> they don't know much. They haven't had much industry experience. Most successful uh, entrepreneurs tend to be in their forties, Yeah. but by pairing them with a community member, we can kind of solve for that and build yeah. this really cool experience, both for the serial entrepreneur 
and these student entrepreneurs. So oh, we've got a bunch that. of things like this that we're really excited about. Oh, I love that. Well, we're going to get have you back to give us the update as this continues to, to move along. Great stuff, and uh, welcome to the job and to the place, Utah Valley University's Entrepreneurship Institute and new director, Seth Jensen. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Have a good All right, we'll step aside for a quick commercial break. More Inside Sources coming up next. You know, my friends at Hercules First Federal Credit Union are all about community, all about making sure you're connected to the things that you need. It's not just about transactions at a bank. Uh, It's about relationships and information, things that are going to help you leverage and become stronger. Hercules Credit Union has been doing this since 1946, always about growing stronger together. It's a partnership. It's a relationship, not just a series of transactions. And right now, uh, they have some great opportunities for you. They have a home equity line of credit, 3.99% interest for the first six months, no origination fees. Also, gold gold tier checking. Uh, You can earn all kinds of reward points that you can use for travel and gift cards. You also get the peace of mind of having the ultimate in identity theft protection and much, much more. All of this at Hercules Credit Union uh, because they're all about making sure you can grow stronger financially together in a relationship uh, with them. You can check out their locations in Taylorsville, Harriman, Riverton, or Salt Lake City, or just uh, find them online, as always, with our friends at Hercules, HerculesCU.com. Intermountain Medical Center in Murray, LDS Hospital in Salt Lake City, and Utah Valley Hospital in Provo are ranked among the 2023 list for best cancer hospitals in the nation by Newsweek Magazine for the high level of comprehensive personalized care and treatment they provide. Intermountain Cancer Center locations provide an integrated, personalized approach to cancer treatment care, close to home for patients throughout the Intermountain West, as well as telehealth services. Brought to you by Intermountain Health and KSL News Radio. With Progressive's Home Quote Explorer, you can check if you're paying too much for home insurance, because giving you options is the right thing to do. Oh, yeah, like bringing brownies to a dinner party. But I never bring brownies with nuts, because not everyone likes nuts, so they wouldn't eat those brownies. And even people who do like nuts will still eat brownies without them. Why? Because they're brownies. But still, it's the right thing to do. So compare rates with Progressive's Home Quote Explorer. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and third-party insurers. Not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. The Angie's List you know and trust is now Angie. And we're so much more than just a list. We still connect you with top local pros and show you ratings and reviews. But now, we also let you compare upfront prices on hundreds of projects and book a service instantly. We can even handle the rest of your project from start to finish. So remember, Angie's List is now Angie, and we're here to get your job done right. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I, or download the app today. Spring is a great time to elevate the look of your home and landscape by adding beautiful flowers to the yard and patio. And pros and hobbyists alike know that the best flowers are grown by Olson's Greenhouse, right here in the mountain valleys of Utah. This is Brian with Olson's Greenhouse, and my family has been growing flowers with love and care for over 80 years. That's four generations of a local, family-run Utah business. So whether you're looking to add a pop of color to the back patio or a beautiful flower bed to the front landscape, flowers from Olson's Greenhouse are the perfect finishing touch to make your yard a joy to relax in. Stop by OGG.com or find us on Instagram at Olson's Greenhouse Gardens where you'll find inspiring photos to get you going on your flower gardening journey. You can also find a local retailer carrying plants from Olson's Greenhouse. That's OGG.com for Olson's Greenhouse Gardens, where you can dream big, dream bold, and dream in color with beautiful plants and flowers from Olson's Greenhouse. It's been a rough winter for sure, but visitors are flocking to Box Elder County. Our feathered visitors, that is. Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge is busy hosting swans to swallows, geese to grebes. The spring migration is in full swing, and all that's missing is you. Box Elder County really is for the birds. Just a short 60 minutes north of Salt Lake, Box Elder County is the perfect place to make memories and celebrate spring, along with spending time with our feathered friends. You'll experience amazing restaurants and unique shopping. Come take a soak at Crystal Hot Springs, home to the highest mineral content of any natural hot springs in the world. Let the winter melt away as you relax and rejuvenate. Take in a theater performance at one of the live theaters or visit one of the fine museums. Visitors really are chirping all about Box Elder County. Check out visitboxeldercounty.com and see why Box Elder County is for the birds. That's boxeldercounty.com. 
Any Hour Services free furnace sale is going on right now. If you haven't scheduled your free estimate yet, do it now. Call Any Hour Services today or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bonas. First, strong winds in Utah's West Desert prompted UDOT to close Interstate 80 for high-profile vehicles from Lake Point to Wendover. Second, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram fighting an antitrust action in federal court. And third, a severely injured dog named Blue Jay now being sent home. 60 degrees, mostly cloudy in Salt Lake City. And back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Boyd Matheson divides rage from reason on Inside Sources. Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. It's great to be with you today. As always, I am Boyd Matheson. And as we roll into General Conference weekend, of course, uh, KSL News Radio has you covered through the entire weekend. A lot of amazing specials you'll hear on air on KSL News Radio. And also, our tag team partners at KSL TV are doing a lot of hard work and heavy lifting for some specials as well. And uh, really thrilled to have joining us today, Mike Hedrick, of course, anchor for KSL 5 TV. And uh, Mike, it's great to have you on the show, and it's nice to flip the script here. I get to ask you the questions today. I know. Today. <laughs> we, usually we have you on anything political or whatever, and you come on our newscast, which we appreciate, and you, you do it beautifully. So, yeah, you have turned the tables a little bit. Uh, well, I, I am so excited about your special that will air on Sunday at noon. So after the first uh, morning session of General Conference on Sunday, uh, I, I often quote uh, Winston Churchill when he said that we shape our buildings and then our buildings shape us. Uh, your special is focused on a heritage of holiness, the Kirtland story of faith, and of course the recent acquisition of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints of the temple in Kirtland. What did you find back there? Well, here's the thing. I'll give you a little background. I'm from northeastern Ohio, born and raised, and so Kirtland was essentially my backyard. My family is, I still have many family members who are back there, and so Kirtland was a big part of my history yeah. uh, growing up as well. And so it was interesting and fun to go back and learn some things, in fact, quite a few things mm. that I didn't know. And, you know, Kirtland's one of those things in the church, and, um, you know, we've had, we've had a number of, uh, of prophets and apostles say, this is one of the areas of the church that maybe is, is not as well known mm. as it should be. Yeah. When you think of all the things that happened there in Kirtland— a lot of times when we look back on that building and, uh, you know, it, it being the first temple of the church, uh, the Savior Jesus Christ, okay, mm -hmm. he, he appeared there, right, to Joseph and Oliver. And so that's one of the most significant things that people think of. And then you think about, okay, keys were restored there, mm -hmm. right? You have Moses, Elias, and Elijah, and, and, and that's very important. But one of the reasons, uh, and, and this is one of the things that I thought of when I was out there, and we talked to uh, Elder McKay, who's, a, who's one of the 70, and yeah. also church historian as well. Um, you know, but he talked about the keys that happened there, and he gave a very personal story about what happened there in 1836, and those sealing keys restored. Now you look at all the temples dotting the earth right now. And he said, because of what happened there in 1836, mm. then he gave the date of his own sealing to his wife in, mm. in the 1980s and talked about because of what happened there, yeah. I, I, I had this happen in my life, which is just as important or maybe more important date, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's, it's, I, I don't want to say that Kirtland was uh, misunderstood is, is, is not the word, but the least understood yeah. And I think that's what Elder Ballard talked about. He, he gave a whole talk on Kirtland yeah. that's beautiful. But he talked about Kirtland may be one of the least understood um, historical places in the church, and so much stemmed from them. So, so we talk about that as well, but the organization of the church, right? The church right. was established uh, in New York, right? We all right. know that. <laughs> in Kirtland, I think, and this is me, this is my own personal opinion, um, that sometimes Kirtland just seemed like it was a speed bump along the way to Nauvoo right. and eventually Salt Lake. Yeah. And so much happened in Kirtland there as far as the organization of the church. And I'm going to, mm. you had the first presidency, which that happened in the Newell K. Whitney store. So that right. was established. Quorum of the Twelve, the first Quorum of Seventy, first Patriarch, High Priest, Seventies, first stake in the church, mm. High Council, and Bishop. Wow. Now, listen, when you talk about the organization of the church, right, yeah. L look at that right there. You had the school, the prophets there as well. So, again, when we talk about the church being uh, being established, yes, it was it was established in New York. But within a year, 
they go to Kirtland, right. and that's where it truly is organized. Yeah, that's such a that's such a fascinating thing. So often we are in that rush to get to Nauvoo and Salt Lake and right. the rest of the world beyond, and uh, these these foundational things that happen there, I think, are so significant. And then having some of these rich artifacts and these buildings uh, now to be part of that, so people can get that sense of oh, this is this is where that organization piece uh, comes together. Uh, as you were going through this process, and and you guys did this in record time. Uh, it was the, fast. From, from the announcement uh, <laughs> that the church had acquired these things and, and the great partnership and relationship with the community of Christ, I think, is a is a whole other story for another day. Oh, it day. is. But it's a, it's a powerful stewardship uh, conversation, I think, uh, in, in all of that. But as you went through all of those, uh, give us something that uh, kind of surprised you in the process and uh, something that we can see when we uh, tune in on Sunday. Well, there's— there's a couple of stories. So um, I interviewed a historian named Carl Anderson. Now, I knew Carl growing yeah. up. My family more so did. Um, and so Carl knows, if you want to know anything about Kirtland, <laughs> Kirtland, uh, Carl knows everything, like everything. Best, best guide of all tour guides. <laughs> yes. And I'll tell you what, that he can tell a story like none yeah. other. And his laugh is is infectious. But and you'll hear a little bit about that on Sunday. But some of his stories were interesting too. He talked about some of the history there. Is just you know, Kirtland, and this is something that a lot of people probably didn't know. We read in the Doctrine and Covenants that there was a scourge mm-hmm. placed on Kirtland, right? And so Joseph Smith receives that revelation. Hiram actually receives some revelation later too, talking about this scourge. But they do say that Kirtland will be built up. Mm. Now, you've got. You've got President Benson, Ezra Taft Benson, who in the 70s comes out and he talks to Carl. He says, hey, Carl, um, tell me about this scourge. Uh, Is it still, has it been lifted? Has anybody lifted the scourge? And Carl's like, well, not that I know of. And he said, well, Carl, what do you think? Because he was out there actually breaking ground for a stake center there, Mm, uh, a a building. And um, he said, what do you think if... uh, what do you think, think if I lift that scourge today? <laughs> and Carl's like, right. hey, uh, yeah. It's well, a good day. Uh, if you want to. <laughs> you, and he goes, okay. And so wow. what he ended up doing was lifting that scourge. That was 1979. Mm. And you think about the events then that happened since then. All yeah. of a sudden, the church starts buying up different properties, different, mm. uh, you know, different land, different things yeah. around Kirtland. And so that starts in 1979, and things start changing right. since that, that scourge was lifted. And then here we are today to where uh, the church is in full ownership of the temple. So he has a number of stories like that. The Newell K. Whitney store, mm. back in the 60s, it was a bar. So you understand the irony with that, right? In the upper upper level of the Newell K. Whitney store is where Section 89, the word of wisdom, was given. Right. And then flip it 100 years, and it's a local bar. Wow. So um, that obviously changed. And so yeah. you can go through there and, and take the tours. But, yeah, he's got a number of stories like that that are just so rich. It's, yeah. it's, it's so neat to hear some of those backstories because those are things you just – don't know yeah you just don't know and it, it gives a little more flavor to it yeah it does and uh, really understanding that heritage and that process again i think it's something that we've lost is our uh, ability to remember uh, i always say the things that we ignore or forget our children may not know and what our children don't know our grandchildren won't possess uh, and i think this is one of those things in terms of all of that rich history uh, and doctrine and principles that came out of that period uh, are really significant. Just in our last 30 seconds, Mike, uh, give us one other thing that we can uh, look forward to on Sunday. Um, y- you know, you talked about remembering. And Matt Groh, who's a church historian, he said that's the whole reason. Sometimes people are like, well, why why the church spend so much money on all these artifacts and sites in both Nauvoo and Kirtland? Mm-hmm. It's to remember. Yeah, That's the whole purpose. That's why we have these things, mm-hmm. is to remember. And as you go through there, I think people hope that uh, you feel the spirit of that, and, and you do remember and, and understand those who have who have made temple covenants and gone to the temple, been sealed, all those things. It began in Kirtland yeah. with the events that took place there. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Mike Hedrick, best of the best uh, anchor for KSL 5 TV. A special coming up on KSL 5 TV, Heritage of Holiness, the Kirtland Story of Faith. Uh, an extraordinary thing. You want to make sure you dial that in. And KSL's got you covered for all of your conference weekend. Uh, stay tuned both online uh, here at KSL News Radio and TV as well. Uh, that wraps up hour number one of Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. We'll step aside for some top of the hour news. Much more to come. Stick around. We'll be right back.
KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios, this is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. It's 2 o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bonas. Our top story this hour, the Utah Department of Transportation is restricting high-profile vehicles on Interstate 80 from Wendover to Lake Point this afternoon because of strong winds in Utah's West Desert. KSL meteorologist Devin Mishuli says the winds are coming from higher temperatures than we've seen over the last few days. Temperatures really climbed to the 60s, so that made the temperature difference in front of the cold front and behind it really more drastic. So we're seeing really strong wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour right along I-80 there from Tooele through the West Desert. And winds will continue through the rest of the day, but uh, they should be the strongest between now and about 4 o'clock. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. President Biden went to Baltimore this afternoon to look at what's left of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. I fully intend, as the governor knows, to have the federal government cover the cost of building this entire bridge, all of it. The president also visited with family members of the six workers who died when the bridge collapsed. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average... uh... And those strong winds will continue into the early part of the afternoon. That's next. KSL News Time 201. You know what's great about KSL's traffic coverage? Trained traffic reporters and real listeners. Trading information and making the commute safer and faster for everyone. Every 10 minutes on the nines. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. Alpine Home Medical. We bring well. The sun is out and the temps are up. It's time to seize the day and hit the road. You were born to ride. And now's the time to make your dreams a reality. Imagine the wind in your hair as you cruise on your very own power scooter. Hi, I'm Jay Broadbent with Alpine Home Medical. And these scooters aren't just for getting around. They're your ticket to freedom. With speeds up to six miles per hour, you'll own the road like never before. From graduation to concerts and vacations, our power scooters will get you there in style and ease. Don't wait another minute. The time to ride is now. Let's start your adventure today. Visit us online at alpinehomemedical.com. That's alpinehomemedical.com. Higher taxes, soaring inflation, record low interest rates, and the skyrocketing cost of health care. The list goes on. Retiring successfully today is a lot more complicated than ever before. Learn how you can tackle the biggest challenges that you'll face in retirement today. Don't miss a special edition of Retirement Solutions Radio. It's this Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock, right here on KSL News Radio 1027. <laughs> Ready to wake up in a new destination nearly every day with Norwegian Cruise Line? Book today with free second guests to Alaska, Europe, and beyond. Plus, everyone can enjoy their vacation with free unlimited open bar, free specialty dining, and more. Visit ncl.com, call your travel advisor, or 1-888-NCL-CRUISE. Offer ends soon. Norwegian Cruise Line. Ships Registry, the Bahamas and USA. Restrictions apply. The rest of my life gonna start today. Utah homeowners, it's time to roll up your sleeves and dive back into your backyard projects this spring, which you need a rock. Whether you're planning to lengthen your patio for barbecues or extend your driveway for that new RV, boat, or new toy, Geneva Rock's Ready Mix Concrete is your go-to solution. Visit GenevaRock.com slash DIY to get started. Geneva can even introduce you to a licensed contractor for the job. Your project starts here. Visit GenevaRock.com slash DIY today. Emergency traffic now brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon 
Here's Ricky Meese. The storm is now creating rainfall and slowing speeds on I-15 in Weber and Davis County. Delays northbound go from 650 North Clearfield up to just past Riverdale Road. Southbound I-15 bogged down. That's from just before 31st Street to Riverdale. And, of course, restrictions for high-profile vehicles on I-80 either direction between Lake Point and Nevada. Spend time with the ones you love and the most unique dining experiences in Utah. Five Alls Restaurant, Five Stars, Five Courses, full of history and tradition. Open Wednesday through Saturday. Visit FiveAlls.com. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. And our KSL weather, that front is moving through this afternoon. Then once it's passed, rain and snow showers with as much as a foot of additional snow on our mountains should all be done by Sunday. Right now, 54 degrees, cloudy and windy. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside Sources. America's voice of reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Well, in the midst of what feels like a constant cultural crisis, all kinds of political upheaval and a faster than ever 24 7 uh, constant change kind of world, <clears throat> it's easy to get bogged down and get a little bit frustrated. Uh, just because of all the headlines that come scrolling across. And often that prevents us from doing the important things of rethinking or thinking again about what we think we know. And so that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to talk about how you don't have to change everything to change. Let's begin. Think you know the news of the day? Think again with Boyd Matheson on KSL News Radio. We're going to do a real shift today and uh, really excited for this conversation where hopefully you can think again about what you think you know Uh, A new book uh, called You Don't Have to Change to Change Everything, Six Ways to Shift Your Vantage Point, Stop Striving for Happy, and Find True Well-Being. Author of the book is Dr. Beth Curlin, a clinical psychologist practicing in the field for nearly 30 years. And uh, Dr. Curlin, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Uh, So excited to have this conversation because I love your whole approach uh, in terms of we either feel the the stress of the uh, ever-changing, rapidly changing world uh, or we just kind of want to hunker down and not deal with anything, or we, or it just seems so overwhelming to us that I, I can't possibly change all the things I need to change in my life. Uh, and you take this uh, from a really interesting point of view. It's an all points of the compass view at this. And so let's start with kind of the backstory. What led you into this kind of approach? Well, so I have been a psychologist for, gosh, over 30 years now, um, and I really have the privilege of sitting with so many hundreds of patients over the years, um, but also, so there's kind of learning from that perspective of what has really uh, helped people, you know, transform and change in different ways, and also my own personal journey and my own healing journey, um, and observing myself over all these decades of life and, and really um, also just pulling together some of the psychology and neuroscience and, and my experiences with mindfulness and mind-body practices. So it's kind of really integrating all of that um, into uh, really turning, turning on its head a little bit. I yeah. think a, a lot of times we feel like we need to change or fix ourselves or improve ourselves. Um, and uh, or or change our life circumstances in order to be okay. Yeah. Um, and really trying to say that you know we can learn how to shift our vantage point, and when we change where we're looking from, um, it changes how we relate yeah. to what we're experiencing. Yeah, I, I love that, and I and I love the the whole framing of, of your book in terms of one we we do tend to avoid those difficult emotions, the stressors, the pressure things. Um, and, and you talk about it in the context of, hey, rather than just pushing those away or or hunkering down, I think is what a lot of us do, or we just try to hold on uh, and instead mm-hmm. to change our perspective or change our point of view. So give us an example of how we can use some of these strategies that you have in the book to change that point of view, different point of the compass. Yeah. So, I mean, we all face different kind of difficult emotions on a daily basis. Um, and we're not often taught what to do or how to meet and greet those. And so, like you said, we can either kind of 
push away or avoid, or um, sometimes we get swallowed up by them. And um, so a lot of the book is really about how do we relate to these inner experiences mm. in a new way. And um, one of the vantage points I talk about in the book is, is what I call the anchor view. And kind of imagine, you know, grabbing an anchor in the middle of a storm. Yeah. And it, it, it brings a little bit more safety and security. Um, and, and it's so this is all about really learning uh, um, what's happening underneath the hood right. and inside our bodies with the autonomic nervous system and, uh, and how that plays a role in our emotions. Yeah. And when we can bring a little bit of balance into the body um, and help to stabilize our autonomic nervous system to bring some, some greater balance, mm. uh, it, it helps us actually shift the way we see the world yeah. that, you know, and, and I think people can probably relate to this, you know, think about a stressful argument or something, or where you're sure that, you know, you, you know, you're absolutely right about something. And then maybe the, the water settled down and, and you're able to realize and kind of say, Oh, wow. Now I can kind of see a different perspective or I can understand that other person's perspective, but we can learn how to help really calm our bodies or bring mm -hmm. that balance in so that it shifts yeah. how we then, look out yeah uh, so that's just that's one example one yeah. perspective yeah and i think that anchor view is so important because it allows you to function from a position of strength in a stressful or an emotional situation because you've you've got that uh, i want to hit just real quickly uh two that are some of my favorite you have the child view which yeah. is uh, we always talk about radical curiosity is uh, is the key here and then you also talk about this uh view of of actually zooming out give us a, a quick hit on those two yeah yeah so so the the child view, you know, often we're on automatic pilot, and we, so we, we go through life and we just kind of react automatically to things. But if we can bring the kind of curiosity of a young child, if you watch a big, you know, really small child baby, they just have this natural curiosity to turn towards what's there and explore it. And if we can learn to bring this kind of curiosity to notice our own behaviors and our own inner reactions, we, we can learn a lot. Mm. Um, and it's like kind of turning on a flashlight in a dark room and suddenly you see what's there. There, there might you know, be obstacles to navigate, but if you can see more clearly, you're able to have more choice about how you move yeah. through through that. So the child view is all about bringing that learning to bring that curiosity, so we can really see our own behaviors and mental Love habits that. and and so forth. And the audience view that zooming out is um, really um, noticing some of the narratives that we attach mm. to things that happen in our life. So we have a situation that occurs, but then there's a story that we often attach to it, right. like. Um, you know, I had a breakup of a relationship. Okay, well, that's a hard thing for anybody. But then maybe the narrative that gets attached is, well, there's something wrong with me or what's wrong mm. with me or I'm unlovable. Yeah. And then that adds a lot more suffering to that situation. Mm. So when we can zoom out and recognize how some of these mental habits and stories contribute to our own suffering, it, it helps us separate out the story from what's actually here. Oh, I love that. Um, and uh, I know we're just scratching the surface today, uh, but this, no, I this know. Is, uh, these, these are the <laughs> yeah. kinds of principles we love to get into on the show. And, and I think the, the net result, the therefore what is, is so important. And that is that this being able to look from these different points of view, uh, really does give you that stability, that awareness, um, and also helps you with that uh, interconnectedness that I think we often miss uh, when we're, uh, either just floundering or avoiding uh, and not getting to the yeah. right things. And uh, great conversation, great perspective. The book is called You Don't Have to Change to Change Everything, Six Ways to Shift Your Vantage Point, Stop Striving for Happy, and Find True Well-Being. Dr. Beth Curland, uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Great perspective, great book, and uh, we look forward oh, to having you thank back. Thank you. All right, a great perspective there from uh, Dr. Beth Curland. Uh, and uh, so important that we, we learn some of those skills and that vantage point. I love looking at things from different point of view, all points of the compass. And whether it's an anchor view, that stable ground, whether it's a child's view, that curiosity is a superpower, I think solves so many things for us. That audience view, learning to zoom out. Uh, I know that's something we all need to do a little bit more is just zoom out. We get so hyper-focused and hunkered down on things, uh, ultimately to get us that stability, that awareness, uh, our own internal strengths, that we can see those and then actually deploy them uh, 
to uh, to be in a better space. Great, great stuff, and a lot to a lot to think about, and a lot to think again about. And uh, we'll be right back. Think again on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. One of the best ways to find out about three-day kitchen and bath is actually to hear the results for yourself. On the phone with us is Wendy in Darwin. Wendy, you got a brand new bathroom. I do, and it's beautiful. Are you loving it? I am absolutely loving it. Okay, tell me about your bathroom. It went from a dark room that felt like an absolute cave when I walked into it to a bright, airy, opened the space up. I mean, it, I, I don't what else. It's just absolutely wonderful. See, she's like, she's almost speechless. So, Darwin, tell me about all the man stuff. How did it work? The quality, the convenience. How did they do? Excellent. We contacted Three Day Bath, and they got back to us the next day. The communication was excellent. They were on time in all their promises, and it's beautiful. It's a great bathroom. Would you do it again? Oh, absolutely. For more about your new kitchen or bath, visit Three Day Kitchen Utah.com. Three Day Kitchen. Should work-life balance be the law? We feel this sense of pressure that if the boss gets a hold of us, we better be ready to respond ASAP. California thinks so. A new bill would give employees a legal right to ignore calls and text messages. I see no downside to this. Dave and Dejanovic, fuel your days with conversation. I don't think we'd be talking about this if bosses hadn't long ago jumped the shark. Weekday mornings, 9 to noon on KSL News Radio. Good morning. I'm the 40% off window company. 40% off? Of what? Hey, 40% off. Yeah, I'll bet it's your biggest sale of the year. This week only, because you need a model home in our neighborhood. Well... Well, nothing. It's baloney. Hi, this is Kathy. The Doug of Window World. When you hear those things, you know you've entered the baloney zone. Resist the force of the baloney zone. Find Window World online at windowworldutah.com. Or call Window World at 281-8111. That's 281-8111. And that's no baloney. Bill Riley here with University of Utah head football coach Kyle Whittingham. Now tell me, Coach Witt, what's your philosophy on a winning team? I believe the key to winning is a strong offensive line. When the linemen do their job, nothing gets through to the quarterback so he can do his job. Well, what happens if the linemen don't do their job? Ouch. You know, Bill, I recently learned that kidneys work like linemen for your body. When your kidneys work, they block poisons and chemicals from your blood. Coach, I've heard that one in nine Americans have some form of kidney disease. What can we do to fight back? Join me, Coach Kyle Whittingham, and be part of the winning team against kidney disease. Donate your used car or truck to the Kidney Foundation. Your car will be towed for free, and you'll get a receipt for a tax deduction. Tell them how to do that, Bill. Donate your car to the Kidney Foundation today and make your car a kidney car. Cars to save lives. Call 1-800-TOW-CARS. That's tow cars. Cars with a K. 1-800-TOW-CAR. Every year, the National Kidney Foundation helps individuals and families affected by kidney disease. Help them out by making your car a kidney car. Call 1-800-TOW-CARS. Ah, the life of a small business owner. Keeping the lights on, calling all the shots, and then there's workplace accidents. 500-degree ovens, rusty nails. Danger lurks around every corner. Workplace accidents can happen, but there is an easy way to keep your employees covered. Talk to your agent about workers' comp coverage from Pi or go to piinsurance.com and get a quote. Safety first, then Pi Insurance. Individual rates, offerings, and savings may vary. Subject to policy terms and conditions. Not available in all states and situations. Advertising used to be simple. Your options were radio, TV, newspaper, and let's not forget the yellow pages. Now it seems like a tidal wave of options. Podcast, cable TV, streaming, OTT, CTV, audio network, smart speakers. On top of that, you need digital marketing for your website along with SEM, SEO, display, video, YouTube, email, and all the social media platforms. Look, you're the expert in your business. Wouldn't it be nice to have an expert to market you? We are Bonneville Salt Lake, the local marketing and media company you know and trust. We reach customers across all digital and social platforms and have the reach of traditional advertising available as well. We find your customer anytime, any place, anywhere on any device here in Utah or anywhere in the world. We work to optimize your results with our in-house local team of experts, providing you with qualified leads, not just impressions. Contact Stephanie Palmer at KSL for a free consultation including a complete digital audit with no obligation or cost to you email s palmer at ksl.com that's s palmer at ksl.com advertising used to be simple your options were radio tv newspaper and let's not forget the yellow pages now it seems like a tidal wave of options 
podcast, cable TV, streaming, OTT, CTV, audio network, smart speakers. On top of that, you need digital marketing for your website along with SEM, SEO, display, video, YouTube, email, and all the social media platforms. Look, you're the expert in your business. Wouldn't it be nice to have an expert to market you? We are Bonneville Salt Lake, the local marketing and media company you know and trust. We reach customers across all digital and social platforms and have the reach of traditional advertising available as well. We find your customer anytime, any place, anywhere on any device here in Utah or anywhere in the world. We work to optimize your results with our in-house local team of experts, providing you with qualified leads, not just impressions. Contact Stephanie Palmer at KSL for a free consultation including a complete digital audit with no obligation or cost to you email s palmer at ksl.com that's s palmer at ksl.com with the three things you need to know this hour i'm dan bombas first a weather front blowing through utah's west desert prompted utah to restrict high profile vehicle traffic on interstate 80 through to willa county second president biden went to baltimore this afternoon to look at what's left of the francis scott key bridge Third, the DEA says fentanyl has saturated the market for illegal drugs in Utah. 54 degrees, cloudy and windy in Salt Lake City. Back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Get deeper insights on the news from Inside Sources. Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. It's great to be with you today. As always, I am Boyd Matheson. And we're going to do something interesting in uh, this segment of the program. Uh, in the last section, we uh, segment we talked about the importance of curiosity and learning and having that kind of child's perspective. And so we're going to dive in today to three really smart people, vastly different backgrounds, vastly different uh, professional and personal experiences, all who have written things this week uh, that have got me thinking. And uh, some brilliant writing and some great uh, things to, to noodle through, especially as it relates to the importance of community. Uh, we talk about that a lot on this show, that it is community and culture that lead. Politics and politicians will follow uh, if we keep that order in the right space. Uh, we're, we're losing a, a lot of that connection and that connective tissue in community. And a lot of that is because of our politics and the impact that that's had on our culture. So if you take the, the isolation from social interaction that's uh, caused by our smartphones and digital des- devices, uh, a loss of third spaces, which I think is so important, other places that we go to connect, uh, especially during the pandemic. And then, of course, we've got the political polarization. Uh, the American people have never been more separated. And I want that really clear a difference between being separated and being divided. We often hear about how divided we are as a nation. I don't think we're all that divided, actually, but we are incredibly separated and isolated. And one of the things that is contributing to that has been the shift away from many of the things that we do in community, including organized religion. And no matter how you identify what you believe or don't believe, how you practice or don't practice, uh, that's not the issue. Uh, The connective tissue is what matters, the support, the comfort that you find in spaces that to you are holy space or spaces where you feel strong or understood or seen. Uh, Those are those are your spaces uh, and they do exist. And the problem is, is as those have continued to evaporate, uh, we're finding all the problems that come when we don't have that. So, as I said, we're turning to three really smart people with vastly different perspectives. And so I'm going to throw out uh, some of the things that I learned from them or some things that I may or may not agree with, but things which we definitely should be thinking about and considering in all of this. And so the three people we're going to turn to today, uh, Fareed uh, Zakaria from CNN. Many of you are familiar with Fareed and his work. Derek Thompson uh, writes for The Atlantic. And then David French, who we've actually had on this show before, is also a columnist uh, for The Times, uh, was an almost presidential candidate back in 2016, you may recall, uh, and all had some very interesting things that tie to community and culture and faith uh, and what happens in the public square. And and all of that is so interesting. So let's start with Fareed uh, Zakaria. Uh, He wrote this piece for The Washington Post. Of course, uh, most of us see him on CNN. Uh, And he talked about what has happened in the shift. Uh, this secular secularization of the country uh, and how that has kind of moved us away from a lot of our core uh, as a community and the things that connected us together. 
Uh, he said in his piece in the Post that over the past few years, the process has been extended further uh, with those who consider themselves devout Christians defining their faith almost entirely in political terms. Uh, that's a disconnector. Uh, so that's led to a lot of uh, democratic de-churching, so to speak. Uh, according to Gallup, uh, democratic uh, church membership was 46% in 2020, uh, down from 71% just two decades before that. And you look at the uh, Republican side, again, it is an interesting component in terms of how people are viewing it. And something we say often on this show, part of our big problem in this country is that we have deified our politics and politicized our faith and our religious practice. And that's where we get into trouble. So when we look at a constitutional republic, uh, we have to, to recognize that yes, we can have pluralism. Uh, obviously, it's a much more secular society uh, as things continue to move forward. But then the question is, is, what do we do with that? And what do we do to make sure we don't lose all of that? And that's where Derek Thompson comes in from The Atlantic. Uh, he focused on the true cost of those that are no longer part of faith communities. Uh, and this comes from somebody, Derek Thompson is an agnostic. And he actually admits at the beginning of the piece that uh, he spent most of his life being kind of cheering this on, thinking, oh, this is great. America's becoming less about faith and religion. And as an agnostic, he thought, well, that's a good thing. Uh, but then he actually questions himself. So here's his curiosity. Here's his think again moment. Again, coming from an agnostic, says maybe religion for all its faults works a bit like a retaining wall to hold back the destabilizing pressure of American hyper-individualism, which threatens to swell and spill over in its absence. That's an interesting take, uh, that, uh, that religion uh, is like a retaining wall from this pressure of a hyper-individualized society, uh, which also has a host of other things that come behind that, and that retaining wall uh, really matters. And uh, he goes on to talk about the fact that uh, organized religion and faith communities, uh, that they provide many things that we're missing in the world today, uh, most of them being around connection, uh, but also some, some narrative and a set of rituals that uh, are organized uh, the week, the year, the community, your family. Uh, young people we know, of course, have been leaving faith uh, in larger numbers over the years. Pew Research Center reported uh, some interesting things uh, on the backside of those numbers. Uh, one of which is that those that are religiously unaffiliated are less likely to volunteer, less likely to feel satisfied with their community and social life, and are more likely to say they feel lonely. And so there's clearly some downstream uh, impacts there as well. Uh, and uh, one of the big components to all of that is being able to, to be connected. And uh, one of the interesting things, we talked about this a little bit last week uh, in, in another new book, uh, that's just come out is the fact that our digital devices are putting us into spaces that are very uh, disembodied, very asynchronous, very shallow, and very solitary. And religious ritual of many kinds, whether that's in a mosque, a synagogue, a chapel, a church, or whatever it might be, uh, those rituals do just the opposite. They're embodied, they're synchronous, they're deep, and they're collective. Again, that interconnectedness that's, uh, that's so important. Uh, and then finally, I want to go to David French just in our last couple of minutes here uh, and look at the things that uh, have really broken a lot of this in terms of that merging of politics taking the place of faith Again, going back to deifying our politics while politicizing our faith and, uh, and religious groups. Um, he's actually part of a group that's called the After Party. Uh, that is, uh, how do you get back to principles that resonate with people of goodwill that you don't have to define in terms of politics? And I think that's an important uh, message, an important lesson that we have to get to. Uh, one of the interesting things, Tim Keller, of course, who passed away, uh, was a great faith leader, but he described the change in the young people in his congregations, saying it used to be that they would come from all of these different perspectives and come across that. And it would create friendships. And now disagreement is ending friendships. Uh, and that suddenly there is a culture in which uh, people are 
intolerant of political differences but are tolerant of cruelty as long as that cruelty is aimed at the right target, one that you happen to agree with. And disagreement now, of course, is not just fracturing and ending friendships. It's actually breeding a lot of contempt that we have in our society. So we have to get to the different conversation. Wrong is not evil. Right is not the equivalent of righteous. Uh, We have to look at the results, uh, as we always talk about on this show. Getting to the results of the process is what matters. And that actually takes a great deal of humility and a greater measure of curiosity. And uh, we'll continue to have that conversation. Stick around. We'll step aside for bottom of the hour news. More Inside Sources coming up next. It's 2.30 at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bomas. KSL's top local story this hour. UDOT has restricted high-profile vehicles on I-80 from Wendover to Lake Point this afternoon because of strong winds in Utah's West Desert. The weather front moving into northern Utah also expected to bring rain and snow to the valleys of the Wasatch Front and as much as a foot of snow in Utah's northern mountains. We're now learning the identity of these skeletal remains found near Willard Bay on March 30th. The body belonged to 42-year-old Elijah Beck, or Peck rather, from Garland. The Box Elder County Sheriff's Office says they're investigating that death as suspicious. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. President Joe Biden visited Baltimore this afternoon. He promised the federal government will pay to rebuild the Francis Scott Key Bridge. We're going to move heaven and earth to rebuild this bridge as rapidly as humanly possible. The president also visited with the families of the workers who died when the bridge collapsed. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average uh, closing trading today up uh, 307 points. The uh, S&P 500 was up 57, the NASDAQ up 199. And our KSL weather, those strong winds will die down, but there's rain following. That's next. KSL News Time 231. We hope you have the right app on your phone for news. You probably have dozens. But the KSL News Radio app, well, it makes our live stream super easy. Plus, our talk shows are right there as podcast for your workday. That's the app for KSL News Radio. Hey, everyone. It's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for less. And for a limited time, new customers receive their second month free when they sign up and use promo code MONTHFREE by May 31st. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Taxes, fees, and other third-party charges will apply. See website for additional details. Join Macy's and Trust for Public Land to bring more parks to more people across the country now during Earth Month. Throughout April, you can help turn vacant schoolyards into vibrant parks. Just donate online to Trust for Public Land or round up your Macy's store purchase up to 99 cents and donate the extra change. Give back today and find out how we're helping people in the planet thrive together at Macy's.com slash purpose. Now. Now your ideas don't have to wait. Now they have everything they need to come to life. Dell Technologies and Intel are creating technology that loves ideas, loves expanding your business, evolving your passions. We push what technology can do. So great ideas can happen right now. Find out how to bring your ideas to life at Dell.com. Welcome to now. When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. 
When it comes to your electrical system, do you know the warning signs to look for? What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and it's okay if you don't know, but here are a few things that you might not even realize could be a sign of a bigger problem. Wall plates that are hot to the touch, discoloration around switches or outlets. If you hear crackling or popping or buzzing around switches or outlets, a breaker that trips a lot, switches that feel loose when you operate them, if your lights dim or flicker when a major appliance comes on, if your plugs fall out of the wall easily. You know, you're not supposed to have to bend the prongs out on a plug just to get it to stay in the wall. If you notice any of these things, you should consider having a licensed electrician check your system out. If you don't know anyone, Any Hour Services has put together a radio-only special for any homeowners listening. One of our licensed electricians will perform a comprehensive electrical inspection and give you a full written report for only $29. But you have to mention this ad when you call. To schedule your comprehensive electrical inspection by a licensed electrician for only $29, call Any Hour Services at 801-443-7300. That's 801-443-7300. Any Hour Services. Services. Traffic and traffic and weather together now. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Mace. We've already had the one tractor trailer that rolled westbound on the 201 at the I-80 Junkin Junction. We now have a second one. And it is on the SR202 bridge at I-80. And don't forget, we do have unusual delays already in place north and southbound on I-15 in spots. This is Weber and Davis County, anywhere between Ogden and Clearfield due to weather. SNS Roofing is your trusted source for quality and affordability. They've been the top roofing company in Utah for over 40 years. Schedule an estimate now. Get a free quote at snsroofinginc.com. Ricky Meese in the KSL traffic center our ksl weather this cold front is moving through bringing rain and snow showers uh tomorrow we'll see as much as a foot of additional snow in the mountains this should all be done by sunday but with the clouds still sticking around 52 degrees cloudy and windy right now i'm dan bombas from the ksl common spirit health studios listen online at kslnewsradio.com we're utah's news traffic and weather station Inside Sources. Inside Sources. America's Voice of Reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Well, every day we get a little closer to November, and Americans are getting more exhausted and exasperated for who will lead the nation as president. Perhaps most notably, all eyes seem to be on some of the youngest of voters. And despite Gen Z's impressive turnout in 2020, their despondence this election cycle is making us wonder if they'll show up at the polls at all. Uh, some people call democratic negligence. Gen Z is uh, the consequence of so much government action and inaction. And we want to take a look at what are the young voters thinking about? Uh, where are they positive? Where are they worried? Where are they frustrated? And where are they just downright disconnected? Uh, and and uh, someone who always uh, helps us break that all down and connect all of those dots, uh, it's always a good day when we can have Samuel Abrams uh, back on the program, non-resident senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, currently a professor of politics and social science at St. Lawrence College as well. And uh, Sam, welcome back to the show. A pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, so first, just give us a, a state of the young nation as you uh, interact with your students. Uh, what is it that you're hearing as they're watching the presidential race in particular play out? You know, it, it's not good. And I usually come on and I have something positive <laughs> to say, and, and I feel terrible saying that. Uh, one thing uh, that, that struck me in your introduction that's worth saying is you said all eyes are focused on what younger people are doing. I think folks like you uh, are interested. I think folks like me, I think your listeners, we're interested. One of the issues is it sure as heck doesn't look like the parties are all that interested. It doesn't look like Donald Trump, who's the presumptive nominee on the right, uh, and uh, Biden on the left, are paying any attention to our young people right now. And they know it. They can see it. They can feel it. Uh, so if you want to talk about a disconnect and why they feel so despondent, uh, that's a big part of it. Neither party, left or right, is reaching out to this group, is mobilizing this group. And uh, between that and the fact that we've talked about many times, the complete erosion and decline of institutions, uh, whether it's church or community or, or schools and so on, Gen Zers today are feeling completely lost and disconnected. And it's, it's really hard to say it, but I also don't want to 
pretend that it's not happening. Yeah, and it's so fascinating to me because in past election cycles, the it's usually the myth of the young vo- voters are going to show up and will they or won't they. Uh, but now, as young voters are talking amongst themselves, they're saying, nah, I don't think I'm going to show up be- because of that very disconnect that you just described. Neither Republicans nor Democrats are putting forward anything that to gives them a, a connection point. You've written a lot about the, uh, the American dream, and obviously a lot of those Gen Z folks are feeling disconnected from that as a possibility and they don't feel like they have institutions or or elected officials or leaders that can help them get there sadly i i have to agree and i, I that was not the case about a decade ago when yeah. uh, we were looking at the millennial wave where they did see a path forward gen zers do not see a similar path here uh when many of them see the path forward as being a social media influencer that's a problem that that does not bode well for our civil sphere our our, our communities uh, at large, and and to me, I, I you know the, the the Republican Party under Trump has not done a great job mobilizing whatsoever. Uh, that's nothing new. I think the bigger opportunity squandered, whether you agree with Biden or not, or the Democrats or not, is the fact that the younger folks did turn out in in pretty high numbers uh, in the last election yeah. cycle. They were mobilized, they were ready to go, uh, and they weren't tapped. You know, they're standing there, they're sitting there, ready to go. They're engaged, and no one engaged them. Uh, and, and, and to me, that again, whether you like the left or not, to me, that was just an amazing opportunity squandered, and it was sitting right there. So unfortunately, uh, you know, as of today, and a lot can change, obviously, between now and November. One of the only truisms that I am completely certain of is that a week is an eternity in politics, and really the world could look very different come November. Yeah. But if held today, my students and students around the country are not going to engage. Oh, that is so fascinating. And I do want you to know that you completely devastated the entire production booth uh, when you burst and I their bubble that, so they can't be, that. <laughs> that they can't be influencers today. But <laughs> but maybe they'll get back to that later. Maybe they'll keep listening to the show. We'll, we'll get them there. Uh, and so as, so as you look at this, and, and I totally agree, it, it's a lifetime away, uh, but currently they are disconnected. And it's one of the, I want to go back to what you said about what the Democrats missed, because they did show up for President Biden, and he really needs them now, and yet their support for President Biden is really gone underwater now. And the fact that no one has invited them, Democrat or Republican, have invited young people to be part of something, to be part of a story, to be part of a movement, to be part of of changing the country. Uh, Is there any path or is there anyone out there who's going to say, hey, uh, I'll tap you and I'll take you and you can be part of something different? Uh, Yes. So, you know, we do see this in other parts of the country, but it's in smaller levels. We see Mm. it in cities. We see it in counties. We see it in certain states. Uh, But on the national level, we're not seeing it. Incidentally, one of the big things we are seeing that's worth mentioning is we are seeing a gender gap emerge. And and this is something that is shocking a lot of people, incidentally, where uh, men are now moving heavily into the Republican category. Women are moving heavily into the Democratic category. Um, And that also, incidentally, lines up with um, uh, religiosity and, and religious attendance and interest where suddenly men again, are moving to the right and are interested in going to church, synagogue, what have you, uh, and women are not. So that is something else that's that's just incidentally in the background of all of this that's uh, worth mentioning that uh, is playing out. But no, on 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 a local level, we see some of it. But, you know, despite social media and the capacity to connect, despite the capacity to organize and the fact that it's easier today in many respects than it ever has been, certainly easier than the big movements in the 60s, um, this generation cannot uh, organize collectively either. Um, mm-hmm. And that's fascinating to see. So on one hand, we can blame the older politicians. We can blame folks like Biden. And, and there is something to be said for that. He does hold quite a bit of accountability here. At the same time, this younger cohort is not stepping up and organizing by itself either. And that's uh, something of note. Yeah. And do you, do you think uh, that is fascinating to me? I hadn't thought about it in that way. Uh, this is why we always have you on the show. Uh, <laughs> their inability to organize, is that partially because they've been they've grown up with digital devices and so they don't have to go out and round up, you know, six kids so you can play some some be- three on three basketball or uh, do something at the park or yeah, wh- wh- where's exactly the disconnect? right. And exactly right. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to mention it, because with KSL and the wonderful listener base you have, it's a real community. Uh, you know, you see each other on the ground, you see each other in church, you see each other in your physical communities. Younger people don't do that. They don't know how to do it. They have not been socialized to do it. Mm. 
Uh, and clicks and virtual engagement is not the same thing as real engagement on the ground, uh, certainly not the same as actually voting and mobilizing voting in the real world. We don't vote through you know, Twitter. We don't vote through TikTok. Uh, we vote in voting booths. So you know, in many respects, the skill sets that older generations had to develop because it was tangible in the real world has faded away thanks to the change in social media. Mm. Uh, right now, there's a ton of attention being spent on social media about all the negative effects, how it harms to people mentally. That's all true. Um, but there's a civic component of it as well. Yes. And uh, this is what we've wrought. And it's uh, very, very dangerous. And again, I'm sorry for being so negative. <laughs> um, this shift has occurred pretty rapidly in the last couple of years. Yeah. It looked very different four years ago. Yeah, no question. Well, we're going to end positive because I know that's where you always land anyway. Uh, and that is just in our last <laughs> in our last minute. Uh, so I think to me, this is the the call to the older generation to lead, to invite, to include, and to the younger generation to step up and engage. Uh, and so give us something that we can look at or a, a model. How do we get back to this civil society, this civic connection, the interconnectedness? Uh, because I think there's some natural inclinations in the young people. But as you said, they just haven't been tapped or taught. Mm -hmm. So we talk about a crisis of loneliness in this country among uh, older people and younger people. In fact, younger people uh, regularly show that they're more lonely and disconnected. Uh, this is a fairly easy fix. This means talking to your neighbor. This means going to things in your community. This means reconnecting. And I think face-to-face -face reconnection could lead to you know, rebirth, a renaissance, if you will, of local institutions and then all the other positive things that go along with it. Uh, people will have lower mental health issues. People will not feel as lonely, and, as, as lonely or isolated. And they're going to be more civic and community-focused. This is really easy. It's put down your phones and go talk to somebody. Yeah. Uh, it could do uh, the world, of, you know, a, a, the, you know, it could do a world of good. Yeah. Sam Abrams, non-resident senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, professor of politics and social science at Saint uh, Sarah Lawrence College, and uh, Sam is always awesome perspective. We're going to have you back because we're going to solve this problem. We're going to do it on this show and we're going to do it together. I'd be happy to anytime. All right, that's Sam Abrams. Thanks again for joining us. We'll step aside for a quick break. More inside sources coming up next on KSL News Radio. Stick around. Held over due to popular demand today through Sunday. Save thousands on hot tubs and swim spas. It's a major manufacturer's liquidation of hundreds of in-stock spas. Utah State Fair Park. Hot tubs discounted 40 to 80% to the lowest possible price, starting at $29.99. Free professional delivery. Take possession tomorrow, next week, next month, or next season. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Utah State Fair Park. Shop over a dozen models of swim spas. From 11 feet to over 19 feet. Swim spas offer low impact exercise, active family fun, unsurpassed relaxation and installation in one day. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Everything must go. Free parking, free admission. You can't afford to miss this. It's a major manufacturer's liquidation of hundreds of in-stock spas. Today, noon to 8. Saturday, 10 to 8. Sunday, 10 to 6. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Utah State Fair Park. Visit hot tub and swim spa sale.com. Jazz fans, secure your seats for the next NBA season by getting season tickets. Season ticket members get special perks like team store discounts, savings on in arena concessions, and more. Be there for every moment during the 2024 25 season by calling or texting 801 355 Dunk today. 801 355 Dunk. Let's go, Jazz. Business. It's all the things that keep this world turning. And behind every one of these companies is a partner helping to keep it all moving. It's why the local flower shop and your favorite pizza joint, the startup and the stadium, hospitals and hotels, banks and restaurants nationwide, all choose the advanced network, cybersecurity solutions, and round-the-clock trusted partnership from Comcast Business, the company that powers more businesses than anyone else. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. See why Comcast Business powers more small businesses than anyone else. Get started with fast speeds and advanced security for $49.99 a month for 12 months with a two-year contract. Plus, ask how to get up to an $800 prepaid card with a qualifying internet package. Don't wait. Call or go online to switch today. Ends 5524. Restrictions apply. New customers only with 50 megabits per second internet and security edge. Eagle Bill and auto pay required. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. 
The Salt Lake Chamber is Utah's voice for business. Okay, that sounds great, but what does it really mean? Well, as Utah's largest and longest standing business association, they support and champion community prosperity throughout the state. And if you're in business, well, that's a very good thing for you. Be sure to listen to the Chamber's Speaking on Business, weekdays at 720, 1155, and 520 p.m. on KSL News Radio. Common Spirit Health, hospitals, clinics, and caregivers, all connected to advance health care in Colorado, Kansas, and Utah. Health care with human kindness is here. Hello, human kindness. My young son, Michael, lost both his kidneys. There's nothing worse for a mother than the feeling of helplessness when your child has a chronic or terminal illness. We felt so lucky when we learned that Michael's brother could save his life by donating a kidney. Today, both sons are strong, healthy young men with families of their own. Please help us save lives. Donate your car or truck to the Kidney Foundation. Kidney cars donations promote organ donation and kidney disease prevention here in Utah. 17 people die each day while awaiting an organ transplant. Two-thirds of these are waiting for a kidney. Make your car a kidney car, a car that saves lives. Kidney cars donations make a great tax deduction. Donate online at towcars.org. That's T-O-W-K-A-R-S. Or call the Kidney Foundation at 1-800-TOW-CARS. Cars with a K, like kidney. Hi, this is Julie from the Visitors Bureau in Logan, and things are looking up. The sun is out, and you should be too. Spring break is just around the corner, so book your stay, pack your bags, and come and play. We're kicking off spring break with the annual Original Baby Animal Days at the American West Heritage Center. You'll be spread out over 160 acres of beautiful scenery while you pet all the baby animals like lambs, goats, piglets, bunnies, and chicks. March 28th through the 30th also features exotic animals. You can see baby bears from Yellowstone Bear World April 3rd through the 6th, which is also when Baby Animal Days combines with the annual Mountain Man Rendezvous. Watch demonstrations like flint and steel, fire starting, bullet making, and leatherworking, and scrimshaw. Wait, do you even know what that is? It doesn't matter. Come and see at the American West Heritage Center. Logan has so many great things to do. Come for spring break or any time you need a break. Vacation in Logan. Just get in the car. ExploreLogan.com. ExploreLogan.com. This Monday Tax Tip is brought to you by Susan Spears, CEO of the Utah Association of CPAs. In 2021, Congress passed the Corporate Transparency Act. This law creates a new beneficial ownership information reporting requirement as part of the U.S. government's efforts to make it harder for bad actors to hide behind anonymous entities as part of illicit financial activities. In the U.S., it is estimated that 32 million companies will be required to make this filing to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN. To find out if your organization is exempt, contact your CPA. Get the most out of your income tax preparation when you hire a CPA. Go to uacpa.org to find a CPA that's right for you. That's uacpa.org. uacpa.org. Listen to KSL on Monday for more tax tips from the Utah Association of CPAs. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bomas. First, human remains found near Willard Bay last month have been identified. Second, the sudden change from warm to cool weather is behind the strong winds that blew over a semi on I-80. And third, President Biden promising to move heaven and earth to rebuild the bridge that collapsed in Baltimore. Right now, 52 degrees, cloudy and windy in Salt Lake City. Back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Hear elevated conversation on crucial issues. Boyd Matheson on Inside Sources. Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. It's great to be with you today, as it always is. I am Boyd Matheson. And as we round out the program today, if you missed the beginning of the show today, of course, you can always go back and check out the podcast, kslpodcast.com, and go to Inside Sources. You can see each of the individual segments of the show there, as well as the show in its entirety, if you're going for a little longer exercise or drive. A great way to pick up on all of those. But we started the show today with the announcement uh, that came out uh, from No Labels. Uh, yesterday, the National Director, Joe Cunningham, uh, made the announcements that the No Labels organization would not would not be fielding a presidential ticket for 2024 election. Uh, 
this despite the fact that they had already attained uh, ballot access, uh, meaning they had the right to put a ticket on the ballot for people to vote for in, uh, I think it was 21 states already, and they were very confident they would be able to get on all the states uh, before the first Tuesday of November. Uh, so despite all of that, uh, the candidate did not uh, emerge, and they did what they said they would do. Uh, they said that if they did not have a candidate, a set of candidates, uh, that had a path, a plausible path to, to victory, that they would stand down. And it was really based on two criteria, as they described it. One was ballot access. Could they get names on the ballot in all 50 states? And then the second would be if they had actual candidates who would run uh, that they felt had a good chance of winning. And they were on path on that first point, uh, but the second just did not emerge. Uh, And so part of it is we have to look at why is that? Why would no one out of the 300 million plus people who live in this country, uh, someone with uh, a path say, "I'll, I'll take a flyer on that. I'll do that. And I think for many, it is the political cost. And they had already seen many of the candidates, like a Joe Manchin, uh, like a Nikki Haley, uh, like a Tim Scott, uh, some of these that uh, could have had a path uh, with no labels, uh, John Huntsman Jr., a number of others uh, that uh, were were all kind of in that mix. Uh, And yet I think everyone saw just how brutal it was going to be. Campaigns are brutal anyway. Uh, But it was going to be so challenging, not just to get the word out, not just to rally the voters. Uh, I think between the money it requires to build an organization and the money it requires, if you're not the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, to get on the ballot, Uh, the cost is out of control crazy. Uh, and I think it's something we actually have to address because I think it's a, I think it's problematic in maintaining uh, what I'm now just referring to as the monopoly of American politics. Uh, we used to call it a, du- a duopoly, uh, but I don't think it's that anymore. I think it's a monopoly, and it just happens to have two heads. Uh, it's got a Democrat and a Republican head, uh, and they go at it, uh, but it's really a monopoly because it's almost impossible for other people to play in the game. And uh, so I think a lot of candidates looked at that. And then they also saw the millions and millions of dollars uh, in a tax that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party were willing to levy at no labels, even without a candidate, because they're afraid. They're afraid of losing power. They're afraid of losing absolute control of their party and then their chances of having power in the country. And it's that fear. It's that fear of losing power. Uh, And so I think everyone kind of looked at it and said, no, I don't want to sign up for that. Uh, We've seen some of the things that have gone on with uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. uh, Just as an independent candidate, uh, the Democrats uh, have spent millions and millions of dollars uh, attacking, undermining, going after. And whether you like him or not, think he's a good candidate or a bad candidate, uh, that's not the issue. But the fact that the Democratic Party felt so threatened that there would be another choice and disrupt the monopoly, two-headed monopoly, uh, that that they're going to spend that kind of money to try to take somebody out. That's part of the problem. Uh, And that leads us to this interesting place. Uh, I have always been frustrated with the politicians who say, you can vote for whoever you want, but if you don't vote for me, you're going to lose power. And there's this arrogant entitlement uh, of the elite in power on both the left and the right Uh, That is part of the reason from our last segment with Sam Abrams, part of the reason why so many young voters are just disconnecting because they don't like to have the finger wagged at them. Uh, In fact, this happened on the late show of all places with Jimmy Fallon. Hillary Clinton was asked what she would say to voters who are not happy with the former president and the current president being the choices. Here's what she said. It's Biden versus Trump. Uh, We know that. It is. uh, It is. What do you you say to voters who are upset that those are the two choices? Get over yourself. Those are the two choices. Yeah, Yeah, I love that. I I don't don't understand why this is even a hard choice. Uh, So I don't love that. (laughs) Get over yourself uh, is not a good answer. Uh, It shows where the elite of the country are so disconnected. Tone deaf, tin-eared, 
And this is why so many people are disconnecting for the process. And for them, uh, I think for the Democratic side of the aisle, that's going to be problematic. The young vote helped propel Joe Biden to the White House. And in really crucial swing states, he's going to need him to show up again. And talking down to them or at them uh, with the tone that a Hillary Clinton did on Jimmy Fallon this week uh, is not inviting young people in to engage. Uh, Sam Abrams pointed that out. He said, look, the Democrats have great opportunity to tap that next generation and to lock them up, lock them in as Democrats for a long time. But they're not. They're not talking to them. They're talking at them. They're not inviting them to be part of anything. And the Republicans aren't even thinking about thinking about it. Uh, they've completely missed the opportunities there in terms of young voters. Uh, now, all of that uh, can leave you a little pessimistic on a Friday, uh, but there is no need to be pessimistic uh, because of community. And so let's just bring it all full circle. Politics is broken. There's no question about it. Politics has failed us in this country, but America has not failed, and it won't. And the reason it won't is because of people like you in communities where you live who help a neighbor in need, who coach Little League, who make a difference. That's what it's all about. As long as we have that, we're going to be just fine. All right, that wraps that up for us today. I am Boyd Matheson. Thanks for joining us. And as always, as you go out into the world, make sure you see something that inspires, say something that uplifts, and do something that makes a difference. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Good afternoon, 3 o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Jeff Kaplan. Raining in Ogden, raining in Provo, windy everywhere. 52 degrees in Salt Lake City, KSL's top story, the New York earthquake. I got scared. The, the furniture's rattling. The things on the top of the furniture are rattling. Let's start with this. Utah's 2020 earthquake was eight times more powerful, but this one's in New York, and it was felt by 42 million people this morning. Maria Chaleos is live at the KSL National News Desk. Jeff, the 4.8 earthquake shaking skyscrapers and rattling nerves. We were actually walking. Earthquakes is not high on the list of things you wake up expecting, and I think that's this is a good wake-up call for